The venue is the Whitmore Hall in London. The event is a masterclass in cello given by world-famous cellist Stephen Isselis. Yes, it's classical music. I like all kinds of music. Here's my favourite tech metal band. Back to the classics. So what's happening here is that in this masterclass, which sounds oddly like audio masterclass, but that's another thing, Stephen Isselis is the master who listens to four up-and-coming cellists and advises them in their performances. Here's a photo of the occasion, snapped on my rusty old iPhone 5. The Wigmore Hall is up to date with trends and allows photography during applause. For reasons that should be obvious, I can't include any audio. Unfortunately, but I can tell you about it. Before I continue, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to be notified every time I upload a new video. One thing I expected from this is though I expected the students to be good, I expected Isolis to have a much bigger tone. That's the thing with the very top performers, they have a tone which is bigger, fuller and all round better. And I was right, his tone was amazing, so much bigger than his students. But there was a problem, I wasn't comparing like with like. Isolis had a miniature microphone attached to his shirt connected to a transmitter on his belt. And because he was talking and playing and playing and talking, sometimes overlapping, his cello was amplified as well. Not by much, and from the wrong side of the instrument, but enough to make a difference. This potentially would be my cue for an episode of Bad Audio Diary. Now don't forget that this isn't a rock concert. There are no PA stacks, no line arrays. The speakers were tiny Ohm brand installation units, which were placed horizontally on the front of the stage. From where I was seated, they looked like the BRT26 model. This wouldn't seem like an ideal way to reinforce a cello. Microphone on the wrong side, installation loudspeakers, not really in the best place for the best sound for the audience. But I was surprised. It didn't sound unnatural at all. So surprisingly, the audio wasn't bad, except that Isolis had some help with his tone, but his students had none. But what if this had sounded unnatural? What could have been done about it? Um, nothing. Because Isolis would talk spontaneously and would often play and talk at the same time, it would be impossible for the sound operator to mute the microphone when he wasn't talking. Similarly, a noise gate wouldn't work because the cello would open the gate just as effectively as the speech. And since the frequency ranges of the cello and male voice are similar, EQing the trigger of the gate wouldn't help. Possibly the best way to lessen the problem would be to use a headset mic so that the microphone could be closer to the mouth and pick up more of the voice and less of the cello. If the sound of the cello had been a problem, this would have been my solution. So that's it. Well, not quite. I have another bad audio diary comment to make about this event. The masterclass was split into two halves with an interval in between. And in the second half, Isolis's mic was inactive. This was good in a way because I could hear his cello naturally and marvel at the massive quantity of tone he could draw from it, particularly considering that he used his gut strings. But now his voice was just a little too quiet and I was only halfway back in the auditorium. There are two common ways this can happen. One is that, when not on stage, performers commonly unplug their microphone from the transmitter, particularly when going for a bathroom break. There are two ways of handling this. One is to ban the performer from unplugging their mic, but trying to get a high status performer to comply with this might be difficult. The other is to show the performer how the mic connects to the transmitter so that he or she can reconnect it, and more importantly, be alerted to the potential issue. Actually, another way is to have someone backstage to reconnect the mic if necessary. But that's someone else who has to be paid. And for a small scale event, this isn't likely. The other plausible reason why the microphone didn't work in the second half is that the sound operator pulled down the fader for the interval, which is correct, but then they forgot to push it back up for the second half. A competent sound operator wouldn't forget that, you say, but you have to consider that this kind of public address is often handled by someone who isn't a sound specialist and they have other tasks to perform as well. Actually, I didn't mind. I got to hear Isolis's cello as it should sound and I wasn't too far back to be able to make out what he was saying. The whole thing was mightily impressive and the improvements to the students' performances were considerable. To round off, here's a clip of Stephen Isolis giving a similar masterclass at New York's Juilliard School. So we have Axel there. What you did here was a three equal. There's no such thing as three equal notes in music. There's always it's going to be going somewhere. Or when 
every note you play in great music is part of the story. You can see the whole thing on the Juilliard School's channel. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to get notifications whenever I upload a new video. And of course, there are other Audio Masterclass videos to enjoy. I'm David Meller, Course Director of Audio Masterclass. Thank you for listening.